Yeah, I say one of the first things you notice walking in Coach Kidley's office, and I've got a chance to experience this over my last seven years, it started out as a, a modest office. You know, it had the trophies, it had the, the individual champions, it had a long history of his 20 years being here. 2014, at our second outdoor Big 12 trophy, to the men's trophy that was there from 2009, 17, 18, and then now we roll into 19 where we start having four of those Big 12 titles uh, lined up and you start seeing these coach of the years, you start seeing things for Divine, you start seeing these Olympians, you start seeing buildings get erected with all this lineage and then you always have this middle spot in the middle of this desk that you know what, we're, we're gonna put something there. We're gonna earn this thing that's been elusive to us. I, I tell this story all the time. I, I came from Abilene Christian to Texas Tech. I thought Texas Tech was a gold mine. I always thought it needed the right person that wanted to be at Texas Tech. It was gonna have to come and stay a while to build it. And, but I always felt like we could win a national championship. And I got this from one of my original bosses when I first got in the game. Would you rather be the person that built the, the, the Eiffel Tower or be one of the millions that visited? And there's a lot of programs where they've had plenty of visitors that's been there and got to experience the greatness of something. But we have a group of kids that aren't even part of this current national championship that can say they're a part of what built this. I think of the Trey Culvers. I think, you know, I want to do it with them. And the Ja'Cory and Duffields, and the Bradley Adkins, and all those guys. I could just go, Cole Weldon was one of the greatest throwers, you know. And those guys laid the groundwork because we kept getting better and then these other kids wanted to keep coming to Texas Tech. You get a good recruiting class, you get a good recruiting class, then all of a sudden, next thing you know, you've got a championship caliber group. And so that is the foundation of, that, of, of what we've done. When I got recruited by Texas Tech, I didn't know who Tech was, you know. I didn't, I didn't know where it was located. I knew it was in Texas, obviously, but, uh, you know, we went in ranked nothing in, in a matter of, our second year here, we were ranked 14th. Then we broke, you know, we went to top 10. Then, you know, we started getting, started getting ranked first. I felt the last five years we had a chance because we had good teams. But as we talked about that process, we, we had to kind of go through some hard times to really learn how to do it at this level. So all the pressure and all the eyes on Texas Tech because of their number one ranking. We were ranked high. But uh, you could tell when, when the lights came on, we weren't quite ready. You know, I think we needed indoor, you know, to play out just like it played out. And, you know, it, it was unfortunate, it was unpleasant. It was a heartbreak. Uh, we, we knew we had a team that was capable, but we also knew we had to have that perfect meet. And going in with a really top ranking, uh, we had high expectations. We felt confident, but we hadn't been there enough to really know how to perform in that very first round. We, we needed that to learn, and I think, unfortunately, we didn't like it. Everyone on the team saw that, and we used that as a motivation way to get into the adult national, and we were focused, we were hungry for success. I saw that the last month, a month and a half of the season. Uh, they, they had been there, they knew what to expect, and so the first round uh, there in Austin was different. Austin, Texas. These Texas temperatures. In Austin, ooh, it's hot. The first day, on Wednesday. Felt like you walked into a sauna. When I was warming up, I had to take my shirt off, and I was saying, Charles, this sun is gonna junk me. We came from under the uh, stands, and we just immediately started sweating. It was there, but it was just like, hey, we love the heat. We love this track. We're about to go out there and do our job. We are not here to do anything extra. We are here to do what we've been doing all year. They took the pressure away from us that we are not coming here to win, but we are coming here to execute. And one thing is, when you do the right thing, you're going to get the result. Pole vaulters are setting personal bests. Then here comes Jay Hall jumping to fourth place. We got two 800 guys. It was like nothing was falling apart. And I went home Wednesday night, and then Thursday night, I didn't sleep much because I knew where I was smelling that national championship and I knew we had a great chance if we would just have a good day on Friday. We are finally down to the finals as we get ready for the very first final on the track, the four by 100 meter relay. You know, each coach may have saw it differently. I saw that we were gonna do something before the day even started. 
they're announcing the teams, and I'm really not even paying much attention. To lane one, lane two, lane three, four, five, and then they get to lane seven, and they say Texas Tech University, and the crowd goes. Rah. Running in lane seven, the Big Twelve champions, Texas Tech. And I realized right before the meet was going to start, we have a ton of people here. I remember sitting next to a couple people. I was sitting next to Coach Ravel and one of the other athletes. And I was like, are they yelling Raider power? Are they screaming over there? I was like, and we started hearing it and it got a little louder and a little louder. We're like, oh, this is nuts. Man, this is incredible. Uh, the support I felt we had. And then to turn right around and run the fastest, it just reaffirmed in me, hey, we're going to go get this done. Is Purdue, Oregon, and Florida State. Then Florida, LSU, Texas Tech, and on the outside, Arkansas and North Carolina a &T. When we got the stick around, pretty good sign that we're going to have a good day. Florida and Ryan Clark is going to win the 4x100. Texas Tech ended up in third. I was, you know, as I was warming up, I'm watching out of the corner of my eye, and I see Jacoby finish third. The guy with a freshman done on our anchor at that point, you know, he's running with a lot of top people in the uh, collegiate season, so, you know, it felt great. We got third, but we were happy. We ran 38-4, fast as ever, you know. I think within an hour, uh, we go the four by one, then we come back and run the 100 with Devine. He's going to win the front end of the double. 10 points for Texas Tech. Still on a roll. O'Dane makes the finals in a triple jump. Duke's in the final of the discus. We're not falling apart. And then here comes Norman. It just gave us another boost. Everything going right for Tech so far. Duke's first throw, 199, and we're going well, that's going to be top five no matter what. I see Devine run the 100 out of the corner of my eye, like, okay, well, that was supposed to happen. I, I knew he was going to score, you know. I knew, I knew Norman was going to get second. I'm, I'm one of them big-time numbers guy. I do the kind of numbers thing myself, and so I keep a spreadsheet. So it was a real-time scoring update. So I knew how many we had potential. I knew how many we had projected. I knew how many we had final. When Duke moved from third to first, I was like, okay, as long as he doesn't drop the fifth, O'Dane didn't get bumped outside a scoring position, which it doesn't seem like it's a likelihood. We've mathematically had this thing locked. But those 10 points he gets for winning the discus, that gives Texas Tech 60 points. They have clinched the team title their first ever in program history. 205-2, I'll never forget it. And I'm just like, we're gonna do this. And uh, it, it was just, you know, incredible. And, uh, you know, it's something I've dreamed of since I've been here, and uh, I'll never forget it. Coach, you have been chasing this for a long time. How proud are you of your men to bring home the very first men's national championship to Texas Tech in any sport? Well, let me tell you, I'm so proud to bring this home to Red Raider Nation. They, Texas Tech deserves a national champion in the men's side, and I'm just so proud of these guys. We've been ranked high all year long. We've had a target on our back, and these guys came here today, and they did a great job. First thing I said was, I think, it was, I think we both said the same thing. We did it. That picture of Coach Falcons and Coach Kitley, I, I was excited for stuff like that, and everyone was so happy for each other. I just know how happy that made uh, all the coaches, and that was the best part of it to me. All right, it's just a great moment to watch, witness everybody contribute their part to, to the championship. The best two moments we had was the bomb won the 200 and definitely Duke. Everybody was so happy for Duke. Um, the other thrower was on the Byron men list all year long, North Dakota State. We found out he won the, won the throws and, you know, that's, that's probably a highlight moment for us, you know. Our throws don't get that much recognition, but definitely in a moment like that, and it's the ways he, he deserved every little bit of it. When we got the trophy and we're out there, uh, all those people came out and got on the field, all our Red Raiders. And you know, there, there was 50 to 75 people. I didn't even know half of them. And they had come to see us win the first national championship in the history of the men's program at Texas Tech. And they were so proud. It, it made me uh, just so incredibly proud to be the coach here because I saw how much they had wanted this for so long. And uh, that's the most precious thing to me. And, and the most phenomenal thing is to, to go and get it done at the best meet ever in the history of the NCAA. Texas Tech University had 60 points up there at the top. In our home state in Austin, Texas, couldn't been any better. <laughs>